Good evening, good people. It is 11 p.m. My flight's at 6 in the morning, so I have a little bit of time to sleep. Going to London for the new OnePlus 6 launch should be fun. Your device should be able to deliver whatever you need, whenever you need it. Really dig it. Get good word of mouth. So I'm packing super light, but of course cannot avoid the tripod. The thing is, it all started with this interesting invitation. I'm sure the phone is shaped this way. And also we have this two side glass. So I guess you can expect what comes next. All right, time to sleep. I'll see you guys in London. All right, good people, welcome to London. The event is about to start. I'm about to head out, but first, a quick city tour. That's right. Here, where's the sign? There we go. All right, so the main takeaway with this OnePlus 6 launch is that it's both fast and smooth, something that OnePlus has always delivered to us with their latest generation smartphone, I feel like, and that's exactly what CarPlay wanted to emphasize. So I've been using the 5T ever since launch, and so the main differences between that and the OnePlus 6 is that the alert slider has now been moved above the power button, so that might conflict with your thumb placement. The screen has also received a slight bump in size because of that additional top left and right areas, but Android is not fully ready for that notch implementation yet, so it doesn't fully, is not utilized properly in full screen apps, uh, so I feel like uh, we're just not there yet. And I've been told by many who own the iPhone 10 that the iOS implementation of the notch is much better for applications where it actually utilizes that area for other things within the app, unlike on the Android version. But it's still a beautiful display. It's OLED, so blacks are inky, and the DICP3 color mode looks awesome. The fingerprint sensor has been changed from a circle to the surrounded rectangle, and dual vertical cameras are now in the center for symmetry. I do like their upgrades for the camera, so the sensor is now 19 percent larger the pixels are larger so we get better low light performance there's additional bokeh effects for the portrait mode which is kind of silly but really cool to see how they can take it with software and i'm really excited to see their slow motion mode at 480 fps at 720p resolution so the resolution is a bit on the low side but you can record up to a minute and then cut out only the portion that you need so you're not necessarily struggling to capture the perfect moment you have a little bit of leeway to capture that in slow motion as expected, this is a dual glass phone, but surprisingly, it's actually more grippy than my aluminum 5T once you get some human oils on it. And it actually looks stunning when clean with this curved reflection look. I think for video coverage, it's an awesome attraction, but only on the glossy version as the main black looks kind of bland, while the limited edition white and gold is stunning with this unique smooth texture on the glass. Now, this departure from an aluminum body is kind of expected as they go along with the flow of other smartphones, but there is no wireless charging. There's still a headphone jack, so no problems there, and a Type-C port with dash charging, a favorite feature of mine on the 5T. And it's kind of funny how Carl only wanted to spend one minute on specs because they're kind of irrelevant. It's a fast phone with lots of RAM and storage. It loads games faster and game mode and reduces unnecessary loading of graphics for apps to save on battery. And so the OnePlus 6 almost feels like this perfect Android smartphone with clean oxygen OS, but I'm not sure I'm ready to ditch my 5T just yet. Because the notch design really bugs me at how the sides are slightly angled coming down and its proportions for the notch don't seem natural. I think I would have liked it to have been wider and not as tall, but regardless, I think it's just a matter of me getting used to it. And now let's hear what others think of what OnePlus could have done differently for the OnePlus 6. What's up guys, this is Seth from Super Seth TV. Uh, if there was one thing that I'd change in the OnePlus 6, uh, it would be uh, for it to have wireless charging. It's got a glass back, so you know, technically it would have been possible. And I'm somebody who does use uh, wireless charging, not all the time, but occasionally. So it would have been nice to have that. But otherwise, I'm really liking the phone. What's up everybody, this is Dom. And one thing that I would change 
is how the notch works. Like, okay, the notch is here, it's a 2018 thing, I'm okay with it, I can deal with it, but it just seems like a lot of Android software isn't ready for the notch. Like, there's nothing special happening here, and in most apps, it just hides the notch anyway. So, that kind of leads me to wonder what's the point, unless we have software that's dedicated to take advantage of that. Hey, what's up everybody, this is Danny. I think the biggest thing with the glass design is I wish there was wireless charging. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest things about it, but I'm actually worried about the IP rating on this thing because with glass designs, you see IP67, IP68, but they said it was resistant to everyday splashes, which makes me think it's IP53. So I would like to see an official IP67 or 68 rating on this thing. So I, that's one thing that I wish they would have changed on the OnePlus 6. What's up guys, it's Carl here. Um, one thing that I would change if you guys saw the silk white, I would have actually preferred if it was the white and say like a gunmetal. Not too sure about the rose gold. Just a minor thing on the design end, but overall looking forward to using it. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jonathan, and if there was one thing I could change about the OnePlus 6, it would be to have dual speakers, like a dual speaker system. I think they kind of missed out on that. A lot of smartphone manufacturers are adding that. I think they could have really had a little bit more to introduce with the OnePlus 6 that they would have went down. All right guys, so the one thing that really kind of bothers me about the OnePlus 6 is the curvature of the bottom of the display. To me, it doesn't match up the frame curve. So the actual screen curvature is not identical to the frame curvature because the screen is slightly higher and it gives you this illusion that something is off. Now the price point has remained in a similar price bracket as the 5T. That's a good thing. And we have a 256 gigabyte version available coming out under $700. That's pretty good. And so with this launch, I feel like OnePlus has won a larger Android market share with the OnePlus 6. I feel like it's a balanced package in terms of specs to price to performance. Uh, and uh, we kind of already know what to expect from OnePlus. So there are no like totally complete surprises. And I would say that's a good thing. And I just hope their smooth and fast mentality doesn't translate into a shorter six month cycle for the eventual 6T, because that's kind of what happened with the OnePlus 5 and the six month later 5T. Join the wireless club with Corsair's new dark core mouse. Play the way you want with nine programmable buttons aligned in a comfortable shape, a fantastic sensor you can trust, and crazy good wireless performance, plus Qi wireless charging built in. Focus on the game, the dark core will do the rest. All right, so let me know what you think of the OnePlus 6. Are you picking one up? And if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Dmitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content, and we'll see you in the next video.